we'll carry on anyway. So to reiterate, um, I think in the email we had um, the uh, discussion of the, the plan forward is to uh, have the premier open and the premier uh, women's uh, standard boat uh, teams to, to race at nationals. Uh, that will be offered to the team that performs best in, in, um, within the region, within the Uh We will also be, in, we are, have already invited expressions of interest for anybody that wants to race in um, senior A, senior B, and senior C. Uh, that's all in small boats. Uh, senior A and B is in uh, 500 metres. Senior C is racing 200 metres. Uh, so there are some things, well, first, um, Caleb has already talked to uh, about it, how this is not ideal, but it's, it's the best uh, plan that we can come up with. So um, the board has, has um, agreed with uh, Caleb's um, idea here. Um, so that's the one we intend to go with, uh, unless anybody has a major objection to that in principle. Or from the guests. No? Okay. So. To continue then, the, the things that we still need to resolve. I'd like a little uh, more information. Say again, Mike. When you, when you say that the, um, the team that performs the best, how will you evaluate that? Is it only yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. That's what we um, now need to um, determine. So um, we, there are two ways that we could do this. Our um, Akarala is not a reasonable uh, event to base it on uh, because it's just too much fun and too variable, uh, basically. So the opportunities that we have are the uh, uh, Araki Open on the 19th of February and or the um, South Island Champs on the 26th of March, roughly. I'm going to be able to two here and there. Um, the difference between those, obviously, is around about five weeks which can be very important if you uh, have a coach that is taking either either of those two teams. This is not the senior ones, this is the premier ones, right? Taking that team and going, oh, right, we're able to do it. Uh, we're able to uh, race at nationals as a rep team. Right, who do I, do I need to change my team? Do I need to look for somebody else to come into the team? Um, get them in the boat, train, work out positions, race plans, things like that. So, uh, from the South Islands, it only really gives about two weeks, right? Um, but from the uh, Araki Open, it gives uh, roughly nine weeks. Do you so, realistically think that teams will um, throw out the paddlers who have been there with them for the whole season and yeah, introduce well, that's, that's new a, ones they think are better? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear quite all of that. Um, you said for a micro paddlers that are underscored and put a new ones that are better. Uh, which is kind of the point, that's right. Yeah, I'm saying they won't do it because, well, they're not going to throw out their teammates who have been with them the whole season. Uh, sorry, I just missed that last little bit. What did you say? I'm saying I don't think it's realistic to expect a coach to throw out team members who have paddled with them for the whole season and introduce new ones for the last regatta. Uh, did you hear that in the back? So the, um, my reply to that would be saying, well, for the seniors, you're picking a team and you are not even starting with a core team. You're starting with a blank piece of paper, right? And you're taking anybody that will come along and say, uh, you know, I, I'm over this age, so can you pick me for this team? I'm only talking about Prem Open and Prem Women. Yeah, that's right. So the idea is that we shortcut the system by saying, okay, here's a team that A, has a good coach, and B, has at least a core of a um, of good paddlers, and maybe have a, a technique and the like sorted out, a race plan sorted out. Andrew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You didn't answer my question. Do you really think someone will toss out half their crew and bring new people in? They don't have to. It's up to the coach. If they want to switch and swap, they can. Realistically, as I said earlier, the top mix crew is faster than the Premier Open Arctic crew historically. 
woman's and there are thereabouts. Um, but it's not about this season, it's about next season. So we always be stuck. It'd be more detrimental to not race than to race and not do well. So so the idea of this meeting is we're not saying this is the way it's going to be done. We're saying this is the core of how it's going to be done. Here are these issues that we still have to resolve. So we'll be looking for a vote from the floor here and from the remotes uh, on what way we should be running it. Should we be saying we'll take the whole team and that's it, not changing them? Will we allow them, say, 50% new crew or four new panels or, or what? Each coach is ready or is their team know that if they win, then uh, they'll be the core uh, regional team. Mm -hmm. But those who aren't performing up the screen may be substituted for someone who is from the other team. Or to be 50% could be 100%. Mm -hmm. Or four. Right. Yeah. But that's in their core qualifications on, as well as each member of the team. As aware of that being the possibility that they could be the case from it for a regional team. Yeah. But you're not, it's not true once you get to the Greek level, it's just they will be represented by clubs. Um, I don't think I follow the club crew. So, yes, but what we're talking about now is the Red Premier Open and Premier Woman will effectively be club crews representing the region. Yeah. So they are that region, they are not the club at that point in time. When they are wearing the regional top, it doesn't matter. Hmm. It's just, this is a band-aid on a fucking far worse issue, but we won't go there. So, so, yeah, so we've got like four panels from one, one club that are uh, in expression of interest. And they, you know, the team's newish, hmm. and they're not going to, how are they going to get seen? So that's just going to put your name in the hat. And, yeah. and then you, yeah. you make sure you get someone else out of their boat. Yeah, I mean, they kind of come I, under their I would be pushing, but so whoever the coach is in those two weeks to be looking at their crew and realistically going, like, can we win? Yes, no. If we can, I would be pumping that team up, making phone calls, as some people like to say. So, so the coach so of your crew must be an expression of interest? No. No? No, no they've effectively. Which, yeah, effectively yeah. have really so it's really anybody that, you know like it's, it's a dollar each way like you're saying i back my team but i'm going to put my eli in just in case the other team wins and then i can go and paddle for them and i would um for from the araki point of view from my point of view anyway uh you know we talk about this being so that we can win but i think it's about developing and improving the the core of um dragon boating in the south island so by Expanding it so that you have more um, uh, knowledge. knowledge, people going into another boat and experiencing a different coach who's probably, you know, one of the better um, coaches, right? Arguably one of the better coaches because they've brought this team up very well. Uh, you'll get a bit of exposure to it that you won't, you know, because Noel's been coaching in, your, in my team and he's pretty shit, but I can go and learn from, uh, you know, from Sean or Evan or someone like that. And I can pick up some, some new stuff. Um, okay, so the, the, those sort of things are in balance, I think, and, and we've got to think. I, I think we've got to think long term and uh, have a lot of that, you know, new new ones coming into the boat and being introduced to it and uh, introduced to the Wyoming way or the Southern way or whatever that is. You have to be pretty certain that that crew is going to national. So some end up in financial situations where. Mm. Yeah, true. I think that's about to be complicated. Yeah, yeah. We're in January 15th right now. By the time everyone gets training, we're another what week away. By the time we start actually sorting shit out, we'll be January next year. We just have to understand that as team A, if they understand team A is going team B, it's then team B is in the regional squad. So there might be some panels from team A to go, I want to go. Two weeks enough. Please. 
more than enough. Any other views apart from Carl? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's important that there's only one part of the river. We're not breaking an entire ghetto under the foot. Or the thing that they Well, it's more reason to get your shit sorted out before you go there because you don't have any heats to sort it out. You don't have any other distances to sort it out. One, you go up to that start line, first time you're going to be racing, probably. That's where we build for 2024. <laughs> I remember, our first training. out of the last three years, we've only raced once. <laughs> It's not just last year that got cancelled. It was yeah. two years prior to that. So us getting a team on the water is the most important thing. I mean, we're never going to satisfy everyone. The way that was run last year wasn't going to satisfy everyone either. But we're doing the best that we can for what we can this year. We're getting a team on the water is the most important thing. Um, by, so by doing a selection from the South Islands, because that's what you're talking about, versus our EP Open, does that mean we're more likely to get a team on the water? I would argue the other way, the more time you've got to sort things out, the more chance you'll get people to go, mm, I'll sleep on another night. Oh, too late. I'm on the flight tomorrow. <laughs> well, um, the phone calls to the, to the coaches, the coaches to think about who is it. But then talk to those people and say, you know, um, do you want to have an extra race? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it has to be South Islands because um, that's the only place you race 500 metres. Yeah. yeah, that was a good question. So we talked about that as a board. That, um... <laughs> At Eric Open, we race a longer distance, but it's I think it's like a 420 turns race, so it's not exactly apples for apples. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, why not between now and Christmas? Because we're going to have to start potentially putting forward their top three paddlers, and then whoever wins, and then you've already got them. That's why we put out the EO request for EOIs now. So the people start putting it in, even for those, even for the non-seniors, if you like, the friends, um, so that they can say, if it comes down to it and my team's not in there, um, I'd like to have a shot. Yep. Um, it doesn't mean that someone who's a first year fella and very average hasn't put their name. You know, so um, certainly for the seniors, that can happen now. You know, um, because we're already committed to amalgamating people, um, once those senior coaches have been announced, that process should be on the way. We are actually trying to pick your team and getting interested people so you can start running squad trainings now through through March through the seniors through February and March. Okay so um, th there are a number of questions that we will need to decide on here. One of them is you know which of those race events we do it. Uh, the other one is um, how how much um, Rick has obviously got a concern that um, you'll be breaking up my team to do it. Others will have a concern. I don't have a chance to, to get in there and, um, you know, be on a, on a rep team just because this other team that's got, you know, 15 good handlers and five bunnies, um, you know, they're, they're in there. Um, so that's the sort of thing we're talking about. So, you know, do we, the, the vote on that would be, um, yeah, go ahead, Rick. Um, my other concern is that um, if good paddlers from, uh, say, Pegasus or WiMAC join one of the better performing women's teams, um, why wouldn't that uh, best performing women's team keep them or try and keep them? You know, there's an opportunity to poach good paddlers from other crews who put their names forward. But that's just life. Like, if they get an opportunity, then that's their choice. <laughs> They could do that anyway, whether they paddle with them at a regional race or just go to one of their trainers. Yes, that's right. Some paddlers from teams have gone moved to other teams. Um, and that's 
you know, we have to we have to we have to suck that up really and, and realize that this is what it is. So good thing Kings we put your everything. It's one race. We just need to get a team that's gonna do a reasonable job and you would expect whoever wins South Island's to have their shit together for two weeks later to do one extra race. Yeah, one race. Yeah. One race. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then if you're putting in the stuff that you're gonna do with it, yeah, you've got to help a uh, your kid. they're gonna be held, they're gonna be like gelling together by that stage and yeah. Again, At the end of the day, it's one race. It's not a perfect situation. This would be a far easier conversation if it was the other way because it's far nicer the paddle wheeling community that likes one another than it is to be the outsider. Speaking as from the crew, that was the outsider for so many years. It was nice to be. I think when we make the decision, we have to understand that the decision is basically to make long term a better outcome. Um, it's to get the wheels turning again. Um, is it way to do it? No. Uh, Rick wants to, oh, no, well, Rick's got his hand up, but Chris is on the screen. I'll wait for it. Rick, go ahead, unmute yourself. Um, yes, I just, because I missed the start of the meeting, I'm not 100% sure of um, what the duration of this form of selection is going to be. So is, is it just for this year that we're doing the yes. best yeah. performing team is the rep team? Yeah, that's that's right. It is um, the, the intention is that um, oh, I think we'd still leave ourselves open to, if this is, turns out to be a really good way of doing it that we might uh, you know do it. I wouldn't write it off altogether. I mean, Aussie did it for a long time for their Auroras. They did it for probably five or ten years, I think. And um, I. They're not doing that now. They've stepped up to that next level, which we were really hoping to do last year, and, and which we're now doing with Black Dragons more. So they have training camps, they have uh, you know fitness tryouts, they have quite a lot of work and infrastructure around it, and money and effort and time too for the paddlers. Um, so, but we can have the discussion later on. We can just make we need to for today. Okay, so first of all, do we agree with this in principle then? Oh, um, for doing the, the prems like this and the seniors and the and picking individual paddlers. Right. Lots of nodding ahead. We take that as being unanimous. Oh, Rick. Um, do you have an alternative? Okay. Uh, well, the alternative is that for prems, uh, um, Open and women's, we'd do it the same as for the seniors. We would be going out and cheering for them. And we'd also have to have more coaches that we'd have to be selecting. I don't think there's time to do that though, really, is there? Realistically. Exactly. Exactly. So we see this is the best option for that. It's going to be hard enough for the seniors, um, for the for the uh prem open and women's. Um the vote here, I think, has been. Uh, Rick, I don't know whether you were voting for or against, but it seems to be um, overwhelming that we do continue with this plan. Okay, so next. I'm voting is, for. Uh, what uh, event do we base it on? Is it the RAP Open or uh, the South Islands? Any. <laughs> it's like the morning racing and then sleep based on that. I <laughs> not also I know that you know because we have race of Pegasus anymore, we're not doing five hundred in the URL other than you know the round and circle that we were. Would you not be you know objective though and look at both events? Yeah, that's that's a good point. And um I we had discussed that at the board too, so that you do it as a as an aggregate. Like if a, if a team starts up at South Islands, you know, comes out of the lane or someone crashes into them, yeah. I mean, do you eliminate them entirely from that? Or do you say, I oh, know we'll go back to uh, Eric yeah. Open and have a look? For me, it's got to be South Island. I don't think we've got um, reasonable enough air conditions that ruin the internal triangles and get. 
You can give an indicator of where you're sitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going into yeah. Like so that the coach can know, okay, we are sitting in the top two. Yeah. It is potential that we're going to win at South and be thinking about, okay, well, if there are paddlers that I will swap out, who would they be? And they can just start thinking against that. Like, there's no harm in doing that way. Yeah. How did she start for the one? So why are you only doing this for Queen? Because there isn't any senior teams, basically. We don't have a team. Well, I couldn't look around here and say which team has got most senior A or senior B or senior C. We've got a smattering of senior Cs across the, uh, the teams. Um, so it's, you know, it's a lottery, which one is it? Uh, okay, so sorry about that. So we, um, oh, Rick again. Yeah, sorry to keep um, chipping in here, but because just sort of something came to my mind. If a team, um, you know, say the women's team or one of the um, mixed teams earns the right to be the prem team and half of them are senior B or senior C, then can they paddle in the senior B and senior C as well? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's giving that paddler quite a lot of paddling, isn't it? Like a couple of races. On the option of the parents, most of the most of the parents are going to have to do it. And we're going to be talking about how to has the ability to be logical, right? It's, it's not rocket science, but we're not going to. Mm. You know, if you've got, if, what's the region first? That needs to be goal number one. Whoever is the coach of the crew needs to put the region first. No, coaches need to talk to one another. Mm. I'm sure they'll sort it out. I mean, when we're in the brewery, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of us that could organize that's something that you're doing there. If not, well, we're in the brewery. This is done. <laughs> okay, so um, just backtracking on something a little bit, um, Mary kind of hinted at it that uh, we would be offering the chance for to be the rep team to the, the first team. Uh, and then the question is, well, would we then offer it to if they decided not to, that they just wanted to do their club racing and didn't want to actually commit their panelists to an extra race, for example, or didn't want to do the extra work in the train? Uh, would we then offer it to the next three down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And would you go all the way down? Yeah, and so I think all the way down to the next race. And it doesn't matter whether it's first, second, third, or fourth, we've got to have somebody racing it from our argument. Some they people would challenge that idea that, um, you know, would you, would you see any bunnies? Yeah. By the time they get to Pat yeah. yeah. you'll be able to cherry pick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that, so that's a good point. It really gives an opportunity for, you know, to, because what we're trying to do is develop a culture too and a history of doing this. And we know, oh, yeah, you know, people are putting their EOAs to say, you know, I was in, in, raced in this. This time and this time, so it adds to the CV to say, you know, they know. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, can you put some of them? Sorry, I moved the laptop from under the uh, room so you can the microphone will work a little better. We have to go over it again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do that.
Okay. Andrew has a question. Oh. Um, so just thinking, does this mean IRAC will not be entering an open crew for Rex? That's not what we're saying at all. No. For us in this we are, but it will come from the winning next yes. thing. Mm -hmm. Whether they stay with that. Yeah, they could kick someone out of that side. Logically, if I did it my way, and Nationals was raised last year, but so we'll use with that last year, I would be putting, and we're in the same situation, I would be putting TMD and Southern Wind together, the two classes. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Surely, that would be something that we're fucking out of the question. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, you raised the point that you know two Mickey were getting better than the red team last time, so it's yeah. not necessarily so. But, yeah, yeah, they would. Right. Okay, so um, decisions we have. Yes, it's a good idea. We will do it based on nationals. We will offer it down the, the ladder. If the first, Anybody? Ah, oh, sorry, South Island. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, so the other question is um, that we really need to just vote on is: um, should it just be strictly that team, or do we open it to to others to join the team? Um, Brooke is kind of implying that he doesn't agree with that. Can it or be at coach's discretion? Sorry, guys, I was really late, but just jumping in there, Araki isn't one team, Araki's never been one team, so why should it just be down to one team to be entering on our behalf? It should be open to everyone, no matter what. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks, Brianna. So it's basically on a call there. So this is a kind of a partial democracy where you're saying, well, the core's going to make up the team, the coach who was also with that board is going to be selecting those others that would be joining in with that team. Uh, I wouldn't think that, I don't think Ariki needs to have that controller to, to say exactly who goes and who, who doesn't in that team. Um, but the, I might draw the line at saying, well, do we say that you must make it open to others? Because Ariki have got a reputation to, to hold here and a strategic plan to try and push forward. This, this is really part of it. Um, so I, I I think that Barricky reserves the right to, to say, well, there are the rules that we're going to have. If we've got to have a rep team that has our the Araki on the um on the on the uh, the shirt, uh, we want to have some say in, in how it's done. That's, that's our reputation um so I, th I think our board is keen, correct me if I'm wrong, and making it available for others to uh, step up. Um, so from the delegates, opinions on that, anybody against that? Anybody thinks it should be just that team? Okay, that's fine. We'll continue with that. Um, really, what else do we need to decide from this? Uh, I think that, that that really talks about the uh, Premier Open and the Premier Women's team. I think we understand how that's going to work. Uh, for the mixed, for the um, uh, seniors teams, we're still looking for. Uh, Applications are still open for expressions of interest. You've had at least one, I think. I've been looking at the emails for a while. Um, I'd really like a few more so that we can have, ideally we should have about six there. Uh, three women and three open for the senior A, B and C. Uh, but uh, we're also looking at the, the number of expressions of interest and I really encourage teams to, to push it out there. We've only pushed the emails out to the team contacts. We don't really know whether they've gone out to every person in the team. So we would certainly encourage that. Um, maybe with something like Reef Sport, we will be doing that, pushing it out to everybody that is registered. So any discussion on those? Yeah. yeah. Yes, we do. Pre Open, Pre Mormon as well. Um, some obviously, um, you know, might be senior A, B, or C, and it may be that they end up in a pre team anyway. You might say, we haven't got enough for a prem C. Can you come down and race despite what Mike says about us old fast when no good? Uh, we might say that uh, we've actually got one or two. That, we've got a few, you know, features and the, and the like that are that can still hold the pedal. Yeah. 
Any other discussion on that? I don't think that we have any decisions that we are really asking for you from for the, uh, the senior teams, A, B, and C. Um, we will be cutting out costs, or the coaching will be cutting the cost to suit, um, cutting the suit to suit the cost or whatever it is, um, based on who puts the expression of interest and um, where we see that, um, you know, putting those those people into those teams. Just um, maybe important if you don't know what age brackets are. Oh, okay. Senior A is 40 plus, senior B is 50 plus, senior C is 60 plus. Basically. This kind of the year. Before, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is just me asking a question. I don't know if it has already been answered. Um, but why have, for example, this meeting, expressions of interest for regional, et cetera, not been put out to others rather than just team managers? Why has it not been posted on the Araki Dragons Facebook page or pushed more publicly? Like I only came across this meeting because I literally have just got home from being out and saw that the Zoom meeting was up. This is the first I've heard of it personally. Like why was this not pushed more publicly? I didn't get that. Could you try again? My story is talking to me. Um, why was that not out more publicly for other people to see rather than just team managers? Sorry, that was Siri or something asking you to repeat. Sorry, that. my Siri. Yeah, my Siri started talking out my Siri. Um, yeah, no, it's just literally raising the question of why this hasn't been made more public um, to everyone, not just team managers. Like, I haven't seen anything on the RAQ Facebook page, anything in regards to this meeting or for the regional rep teams. Um, so besides, like I understand you, you send it to team managers, but why has it not been made more public? It's the same channel that we generally use for all of our comms. If we talk, if we send out something about what's happening at uh, Apparat, we we'll go to the managers. We we don't send it out to all um, all panelists. Um, so the the manager manager um, decides what to do with it, and then it may be that some managers are saying, oh, no, "I'm not interested in having my team involved in that." That's cool, but do you think that should be up to the individual peddler themselves, not the manager? I do, actually, yeah. It, it's not just the managers. It's, it's a delegates meeting, right? It's a two delegates from each team deciding what's best for the organisation, not not just the managers. Yeah, but not even that in general for... Just in general for even putting out to reps why like even to anyone for rep teams, et cetera, why there's not more information put out to all our paddlers, not just team managers or delegates. Yeah, and that's, uh, like I say, because our channel is via the uh, the managers at the moment, we like to rely on them to um, do with that what they will. Um, we, with the rep sport, we'll, everybody should be registered with an email that we can co communicate with them um, if we need to. Uh, and um, as a foot FYI, Basically, when you um, uh, uh, are signing up on the Rev Sport, um, um, you're accepting that uh, you know that is you, you become part of the Rev Sport, so that um, it allows us to send out those that useful information to the directly to the peddlers. Um, it's accepting that um, we can contact you directly. But have you contacted peddlers directly? No, because we don't know who all the peddlers are directly. But do you not have the emails from what you just said from Rev Sports signing up? So why has that not also been a chain that's being used to communicate? We know there are a lot of paddlers that haven't um, uh, registered on Rev Sport at the moment, and that's still an issue that we're working through. Yeah. But for paddlers that have registered, why is the emails? Because you just said emails were getting used as a chain of um, use of communication why has that not been used if peddlers have already signed up for rev sport if you do have the email list available um Araki has um the uh, uh we have a, a a list of um official contacts if you like you know we know from checking the briefs who the three contacts are and, and all the other teams and so on so they are our, our normal, you know, uh, on that mailing list. We don't send out to everybody for um, everything. Um, what are the, what's the thought around the table here then? Should we be reaching out as far as we can to everybody? Mm -hmm. we know? I, 
And she actually sends it to the whole team and says, I can't attend. The whole team gets it. I do agree that the use of the Dragon Boat, uh, the RFQ Facebook page is definitely been a lot looser to us in terms of getting the information out to panelists. So if we've opened up AOIs, they were previously posted on the Facebook page, then all the panelists in all the community could get that section of the information, like meeting minute, like this kind of meeting call managers, but when it affects the whole community, like the EOIs, it should be on the Facebook page. Uh, that's a good point. I, I think that's something we can we can do from now, but I was uh, also mindful that really there were some of these big decisions that we hadn't made. And now that I've got the delegates around the table, the two, um, that we have, um, you know, got a, got a good consensus of where we're going. Uh, everybody seems to be, you know, on, on the page, same page. Um, anybody hasn't spoken up, well, this, this, this was their chance. So now we, we know, you know, where we're going to go with this. So it's probably better we can send out some more positive messages through that. So yeah, we'll po be posting that on the Facebook page. We'll, um, we'll put out these reminders for you of the expressions of interest. I think they're slightly different for the paddlers and for the coaches. We, we, um, I think the email talked about uh, the times that we, well, maybe it wasn't, but we'll, we have a program of when we take the expressions of interest from the coaches, uh, our key board has a look at it, and if we need to make a decision about who we select out of that, um, we'll, you know, make another announcement, and it's uh, a lot of it's uh, centred around um, ACRA, so being, you know, there, so it's the idea is if we get the coaches, uh, Give them a yes or no, get their expressions of interest, give them a yes or no before ACRA. So they can at ACRA they can have a little look out on the water and, and, and see who they think is performing well. And if we can figure that out from the shore and let you know how. <laughs> uh, but it's it's the opportunity anyway to, to sort of have a look at that and start getting that communication, start looking at other teams, looking at other coaches and things like that. Evan. Um, could I maybe have a few minutes just to talk about um, Black Dragons and the focus? Yeah. Um, it's appropriate when it flows upon from where we're at here to so the Black Dragons program. Yeah. Only if you feel it's an appropriate for us. Uh, well, I, I, for anybody from the floor or from the board, do you think there are any issues that we haven't covered here that we, um, Caleb in particular, have we got enough to go forward with? Yeah, I was more concerned about us for the meeting there. After the program, after that, that's what my concern now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, so. it's true. We've really been focusing on, you know, up to the, you know, um, April, 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 really. Yeah, we'll get to April. Okay, so even the floor rules. Thank you, Mel. Um, so we have um, applied to NTDBA for coaching roles, they have been selected and announced. Um, no, 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 Monday. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Um, Thanks, just come in and silence <laughs> So, there have been coaches selected from each of the senior um, classes, divisions. Um, I have um, been given control of senior C throughout the country, and there are others doing the role in other parts of the country. Assisting me, I have an assisted coach, I don't know if I should name the person, maybe or hold that, hold that. and yeah. there is a manager. They are local people. But the way I see that running is that as a coach responsible for selecting the best rec teams in the country, I will need to visit Auckland, Tauranga, Wellington, Waikato, and run coaching sessions there, looking at their interested patterns there. Locally, I expect that any training that I do for Senior C would also, I would open that up to Senior A and Senior B patterns so that we can do some consistent training for you to be then um, 
putting your best foot forward for the senior B and senior A coach to look at you at that other um, age group. So um, the only way this is going to work is if people put their expressions of interest in on the Black Dragons um, side of the NZDA website. Right? I will be speaking to coaches locally and probably nationally to get a feel for who they think are their best senior C partners. So that because I don't know those teams well enough, um, I want to truly make it a representative team with the best partner that we can possibly get from our own country and now get together for Thailand in August. So if you're thinking that you'd like to be involved in that Black Dragons program, I encourage you to put your expressions of interest in. And that is a thing that can flow through from an Iraqi team right now to then step forward to Thailand. So think about the Iraqi web program. If you're a senior A, B, or C, um, you've got a category, not just the prem. Right? We want to put strong red teams in those age categories, male, female. We can bring you to the person, let us see who's king, and take it from there. Um, and, and just to support that, so Caleb and myself have been on the national, what's it called? National representative of yeah, doing all the interviews and everything like that. And one of the yeah. things, is that it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I've been to Kunming. Um, Rick and a few of the others went to Kunming with a team up there and then um, went to Thailand. So it's competed in Thailand. I really believe strongly that we've got really good opportunities particularly in the senior level. Sorry, friends in the room, or on the call. At senior level, we've got really strong opportunities. And we've kind of been saying this and banging on at this at, at the national level for quite a long time. Um, and, and particularly, you know, mixed and women's and open. Right across, 20 man, 10 man. You know, there's a lot of, and I think some really, really good categories. Not, I'm not just talking here, but I'm talking across the country. Um, you know, and, and it will be an opportunity for a lot of people to see what it's like on that world stage. Very exciting. Um, Thailand is, you, you mentioned, yeah, top knowers in Thailand. Thailand is a great place in terms of easy to get to. Um, and food is fantastic. And the racist. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the yeah, we had five seconds. Anyway, it's um yeah, so I really strongly recommend and I think you know, even as coach would be fantastic. Very fair, very, very good coach, you know, he's brought teams through from um from the Aiden side, starting with kids we've never had it before to win a series of gold medals, not just here but internationally. So Great opportunity. Great. So, it's, you know, we now have quite a pathway available. Um, um, you know, there's plenty of opportunities that uh, those who want to take it a little bit further. And with a uh, you know, very broad drag and boat community, it's not just your own team that you have to drag, drag along, but to, you know, opportunities to get into other boats you know, quite at a different level and ex extend your paddling too. So, you know, if, if you were at, at an RAP squad, Get a, um, another good coach here. If you went to a national coach, here's another, another little chance that you'll have a look at somebody else's coaching style. Pick up a few more techniques and little tricks. And meet a whole bunch of new great people as well. And go like this. Yeah. All right. Any other business from here? Fairly well done. Probably give you 18 minutes back of your, of your day to get out and enjoy, enjoy the sunshine. It's cooled down enough to mow the lawn and so on, probably right now. Um, just a reminder that we're having an extraordinary um, general meeting back here on the uh, end of the Stephen, where I think it is, to uh, discuss those changes to the Constitution and um, to formally um, accept uh, Amy down the back of the room there as the um, stepping up as our uh, secretary for uh, Araki Dragons as well. Yeah.
And that way I get to introduce Amy before we actually have that meeting and tell them who we've got. Here. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Who wants to be involved in schools? Can you say the hype for 10 minutes after? Well, I've got a semi Catholic audience. Uh, but if you, I, I'm happy to try and do sweep.